Hey guys, what's up? It's Darkmech here and welcome back to another video. Today we are starting the Mythic Plus Guides, okay? So we're going to start off with Spires of Ascension today. And the idea behind these videos is to get you comfortable in moving into that plus 10 uh, keystone range with the new affix, with the seasonal affix, Prideful, and then moving towards that plus 15 bracket to get your mount. As the aim of these walkthroughs and these guides is to get newer tanks, uh, tanks that are progressing through the ranks, comfortable enough to lead their dungeon groups through that plus 15 range and just get as many of you, uh, your mount as possible. It's basically the purpose of these videos. I'm going to change up the format in these videos compared to how I did it in BFA. Uh, and we'll see what the feedback is and if you guys like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break the dungeon up into sections. I'm going to use dungeon tools to go over that section. We're going to talk about what the mobs do, what pulls we're doing and things like that. And then we're going to switch to a VOD and we're going to go over it so you can see it from a planning perspective and then an executed perspective live. So um we'll see if you guys like that let me know in the comments below uh but otherwise let's get into this spires of ascension so to start off this is the first platform in spires of ascension and you can see on my mdt this is our breakdown of our pool here so we're going to do this seven here as one pool and where they're going to do this three up the top now guys with the pools if the pools are too big if the pools are too small whatever you do your own thing okay um, just because it's mapped out in this way in the video doesn't mean you have to execute it in the exact same fashion. You can change and do whatever you like. This is just a guide and a starting point for what we do. So this first platform is going to have four vanguards, two menders, one goliath, and three castigators on it. So as I said, this is our opening pull here. So the vanguards, they're going to do a frontal cleave on every single auto attack they have. So just make sure with these vanguards, you're facing them away from your group at all time. The Menders, they're going to cast a thing called Forsworn Doctrine, which is a channeled heal for 10% of their max health. You need to have somebody kicking that. Uh, the Castigators have two casts. They do a Dark Lash and a Burden of Knowledge. Um, Dark Lash is a, a bolt that gets thrown out, which you can kick. Uh, the Burden of Knowledge actually is what you want to kick on them, though. It's a hefty magic damage dot that gets applied for six seconds. Uh, you want to make sure you're kicking it. If you don't have a kick available for it, your healer needs to dispel it when they can. The Goliath is the biggest threat pretty much in this whole entire area, though. Um, you need two people assigned to Goliath kicks, okay? So the Goliath casts a thing called Rebellious Fist, and if it gets off, it's pretty much GG. The cast sequence for the Goliath is uh, Rebellious Fist, Rebellious Fist, and then a Recharged Anima. Now, the Recharged Anima is an absorption shield that goes around him. It is not worth attacking him through that period of time because immune to damage. Just tick, uh, uh, select off him, attack something else, and then go back and finish him off once the shield's dropped. So... That's pretty much it. As I said, this pull of first seven, hero, blow it up, and then we take uh, we finish up the three. If the Goliath's still alive, you can trail it up to the top. So that is the first section. So we're going to go onto the VOD now, and we'll have a look at this done. So uh, this VOD's pretty hard quality too. I apologize, guys, but uh, timer starting off now. I'm on my mount. I'm running up. I'm going past the first three. It's a little bit dicey on a DK because we're so slow. Um, so pulling these down, the Goliath is walking down the stairs now, and we're going to grab the Goliath in. And then we're just going to nuke these, the, nuke these. Now, the biggest thing, as I said, make sure you have kicks assigned for the Rebellious Fist. There it is there. So I've got the first kick. Um, the Doctrine needs to be kicked as well. That's the heal that's on the uh, Force One uh, Castigators. So make sure you're getting the... Uh, sorry, that's the Burden of Knowledge, which is the magic dot from the uh, the Castigators that need to be kicked. The Mender's the one with the Doctrine that you also need to kick. So there's a little bit that needs to be managed in this pack. A little bit unfortunate here. It's a sanguine week. You can use these pillars here over at the side. You can line of sight to kite things if there's bad sanguine placement. Or even if you're having a hard time grouping them up, you can use these pillars to move mobs. The Goliath with the Recharge Anima Shield, as you can see, just went back to full health. I compare it, basically, it's the equivalent of a Peacekeeper in Motherload with Sanguine. If you do get unlucky with a drop here, you can just sit in the Recharge Anima in Sanguine and heal up to full. Like it nearly did again there, it's on the outside. So tanks, just be really careful with your placement there. Now, because of that, we're going to drag this Goliath all the way up the stairs. I'll just keep moving this along up to these top three here, okay? Um, again, the vanguards, you can see that sweeping blow. That's that frontal attack. So you just need to make sure that you are always facing that away. The dark lashes, if you've got spare kicks, feel free to kick them. Um, otherwise, you shouldn't have too many problems on that. So we're going to drop those three quickly up the top here. And then we are going to move over to the next section uh, on the platform. So I'm going to switch back over to MDT now. 
you're going to land over here. And this is the pack in front of the boss. Now, there's no new mobs in this pack, okay? So you're going to get one Goliath, one Mender, two Vanguards, and one Castigator in this pack. What you want to do to make your life easier, especially as your key levels go up, is you want to CC this Mender here. By CCing this Mender, it means that you don't have to worry about kicking the Doctrine uh, because you will have two kicks assigned to your Goliath, all right? So it just makes your life easier. Uh, so you can CC this. Now, what you want to do, which we don't do well, is you want to smash down this Goliath and then you want to kill the rest of this as even as possible. So smash down the Goliath, then break the Mender out and kill them all as evenly as possible. Reason being is you'll proc Prideful from this, your first 20% Prideful, and you'll take it straight into the first boss. We don't do that well, but that's what you want to do. Now, the first boss, Kintara, there's a beam linking Kintara and her serpent pet, Azul's. okay? That beam deals uh, pretty heavy arcane magic damage and it leaves a dot on you for 10 seconds. It ticks every one second for 10 seconds. So you want them to be stacked together so there's no chance for anyone to realistically run through that beam. As the tank, you want to follow the serpent around with Kintara so your DPS can get consistent cleave up on it. They share a health pool, so you want to keep them next to each other as, as easily and um, as high an uptime as possible. Uh, the Serpent Azuls will shoot out arcane missiles. You just need to dodge them. As the tank, when it walks around the platform, when it stops to shoot missiles out, try and position yourself behind the Serpent to make life easy. At 100 energy, Kintara will cast an Ass Reaming ability called Overhead Slash. Um, it's a targeted ability now, so it no longer is just a frontal cleave that hits everyone that's sort of uh, in it or in, in that zone, so to speak. It's a targeted ability that only hits you. Um, and it hurts, especially on a tire end setting. So use your CDs around this. Monks, you can actually roll backwards out of the slash and not get hit. And Vengeance Demon Hunters, you can probably jump away because fuck you. Uh, after defeating Kintara as well, guys, there's actually spears uh, on each side of the map, depending on what side you go. Uh, just bringing this up now so I don't forget. Kyrian Covenant players, make sure you're getting those spears, but I'll cover it off as we go past it on the route. But I just thought I would throw it in there now. All right, so... Let's go to the VOD and let's have a look at this one executed. So, we are flying across here. Okay, we got a CC. The Mender is trapped here. And we're going to pull these down the stairs. And again, the Goliath is marked with a skull, okay? The Goliath is supposed to die ASAP before anything else. Now, you will get a shield uh, going on through this. So, you know, your damage is a little bit split. But you do want to have the Goliath as low as possible, getting your two kicks on it. And then it's going to go into its recharge anima. So you can see here it's at 20%. So it's actually not bad. Maybe we didn't suck as much as I thought. And now he's in his shield. So what we should have done now is broke out the mender. Okay. So we should have broken out the mender. The Goliath actually in sanguine heals about 15% there, which is unfortunate. Again, on non-sanguine weeks, you don't have to worry about this. The mender should have been broken out well and truly into this. And we should have been finishing up these two the way this pool went together. Um, at the same time, because remember at the end of this, we're at 19.65 at the end of this, when this dies, we're proccing prideful. So you want to kill them as close together as possible. That way you're not fighting prideful, which is hard enough on your healer when it hits 20 stacks as it is with another mob beating down and having to control as well. So, uh, prideful coming up here. With Prideful, you can actually stand pretty much, if your group can stand in a line, uh, you don't have to do a hell of a lot of movement. See, we potatoed there and I ended up getting hit by the AOE. If you stand in a line though, you can actually kind of just uh, send these off on different axes and you don't have to worry about moving. But either way, an easy general rule of thumb is whoever has the Prideful doesn't move and everyone else can move, but you guys can do it whatever way you do. Um, prideful is not affected by things like Sanguine and things like that as well. They don't heal, so that's worth noting. Um, DK's AMS is great here. AMZ is great for your group here as well in providing some assistance. Um, but yeah, you just want to make getting through the prideful as easy as possible. So prideful's dead. And then we're going into the first boss here. So we went through Kintara. Now we're going to see it live. Big thing, as I said, you always want to keep Kintara with the serpent, uh, for as high up time as you can. Basically they share health pools, as I said, um, and you just want to keep as much cleave going on them as you can. And there's also that big arcane beam. You can see it in the middle of them there. If you run into that, you get a pretty hefty magic dot ticking on you. I just went through it then. I've got deep connection on me. So that's a really good thing about watching vids back. You can see how much of a potato head you are. You can see these attenuating barrages going out here. So I've just positioned myself behind the serpent. So I'm not getting hit. 
God, it's really depressing to see that. So Barrage going off this way, you can just go and stand behind the Serpent here and you don't have to worry about dodging its Pog. Um, Kintara will be throwing spears down and stuff like that while she's in the air. So again, just dodge that. It's not too much of an issue. Then she'll come back down. And again, you just want to trail around with it. Um, shouldn't have too many issues on this boss. The biggest issue you'll find on this boss is tyrannical with the overhead slash. So you can see here the energy. Energy fills up really quick. At 100% energy, you cop a slam every time. So here's the overhead slash there. And you can see on Fortified, it deals like 40 odd percent of my HP. It hits really, really hard. And that's without being a potato and get hitting it, hit, getting hit with anything else. There's that beam again that I'm talking about. You want to keep them together so no one has the chance to get clipped by that. That is pretty much it, guys. So once they're dead, we... Oh, shit. I skipped forward. Spoiler alert. So once they're dead, we're going off to the right, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to MDT here. So once they're dead, uh, once the boss, there's, boss is dead, we're going off to the right. Now, in this little section here, you're going to get six Stealth Claws and a Dark Praetor, or I think that's how you say it. Now, the Stealth Claws have a really nasty bleed that stacks on you via their ability. I think it's called Rake, and it hurts. It really hurts. The idea with this is you want to run in, get as much threat as you can while using a CD to not die, and then you just want to bail out. Now, you can pull this Dark Praetor in with this pull if you want. Otherwise, you can do the six Stealth Claws and then fight it by itself. It all depends on how you're shaping up. Now, there's Stealth Claws. So, they're in Stealth. Now, there's a there's one over asleep on this wall. You can run over here and drop a D&D &D into this area. Otherwise, flares, whatever you've got to break uh, these out is really important. One thing you don't want to do, and I'm about to show you on the VOD is run in there like a potato. Now, I don't have Icebound Fortitude up. If you wanted to sacrifice Icebound Fortitude here, not really advised, you could run in, gather them all up, and then hit Icebound Fortitude to get out of the stun. It's, it's a waste of Icebound Fortitude, but you could do it. Now, you can see we break them out. It's all cool. However, just because you break one out and get in combat, it doesn't mean the others aren't going to come and pounce on your anus. So, I run into the middle here. We get this one out of flare. Actually, maybe I should have just gone and stood in flare. That may have even been too big brain for me. So, you can see I get stunned here. No Icebound Fortitude to get out. Pop Purgatory straight away. Three stacks of Rake on me, and I'm having a bad time. Now, I recover. We don't die. Four stacks of Rake. I'm okay. What I should have done here is run away. And I've ran away. That's great. What I should not do is walk back in. So what I've done now is walk back in. Rake stacks didn't drop. Five stacks, seven stacks of rake. Swarming mists up. I'll be fine. I'm dead. So with Shadowlands tanking, A, you need to pay attention to your debuffs. And B, if you don't have to take the damage, there's no prize for running back in and being a hero that dies. Just get aggro and run away. You know, just just be safe. Just be safe, man. Run away. There's, there's nobody... Your balls are not bigger because you stood in there and face tanked it. You know, people will think you're a much cooler person if you stay alive. So, yeah, just stay out. So, we didn't get the Praetor in this one because I got reamed. But if, we had, if I had been a little bit smarter, I could have stood in that flare, got them out, and then probably moved back towards the stairs and then Dora Shadows to the other side of those Stealth Claws whilst kiting them grabbed this Praetor in and could have run around that way. Instead, we're now pulling it solo, you know, which is, it's unfortunate because generally you don't want to fight single, you know, singular mobs in Mythic Plus, but that's what we're having to do here because, you know, that's just the way it is. The Dark Praetors, uh, they have uh, an ability called Dark Seeker. That's that uninterruptible little arcane bolt they throw at you. There's, you know, not really much you can do about that. And they do a swift slice, which is like a charge dashy thing before uh, towards you. Just get out of the way of that. So that's down and now we're heading over to the next platform. So back to MDT. This is our next platform here, okay? So new platform, two Goliaths, two Praetors, one Stealth Claw and four uh, either Divers. Now, or Ether Divers, however you say it. I should say you can go left or right here, okay? I like going right. I think going right has a little bit more group coordination involved in it though. So just be aware of that. And it's mainly due to this section and this section up here. So we're going right, all right? So uh, first pack we're going to pull is a Praetor, an Aether Diver and a Stealth Claw, okay? So the Aether Divers or the Aether Divers are the new uh, mobs that you'll see here. They cast a stacking magic dot called Insidious Venom. You just want to kick these when you can, dispel them uh, if they get through as the healer and uh, DKs, we can use things like AMS to immune applications of them. 
This first pack, not a big problem. Second pack, little bit dicey, but if you manage it, it's not actually that bad. Goliaths need two kicks each. So you need two people assigned to each Goliath to kick them. Two range kicks will work on them as well. So don't fret if you've got, you know, if you don't have two melee in your group or something like that. You can two range manage kick these. Um, and there's a Dark Praetor in this. And then this next pack's just got another Praetor and three of the Divers. So, and then this little thing here is the Kyrian Spear that I'm telling you to pick up. And you are going to pick this Spear up if you have a Kyrian Covenant uh, member in your group. Stuns them, uh, I think, for like eight seconds and does 20% increased damage. Might be 10 seconds. And deals, uh, you all deal 20% increased damage to the mobs affected by the Spear. So, back to the VOD here, guys. We are flying on over. Sorry, uh, and this is that first group I was talking about. So the Praetor, the Diver, and the Stealth Claw. You're not really going to have too many issues on these, so I'm just going to sort of skip through them because I'm trying. I'm really conscious about how uh, how long this video is going to go for. So once they're dead, then we are on to the Double Goliath pack. So again, make sure you're being vocal about who has what kicks, but, you know, they're marked. Just for the love of God, make sure you're getting your kicks off. Watch this group up the top. They will pat. They pat to about sort of this area here. So just move back a little bit with them so you don't risk pulling them in because it's the last thing that you want. If you can manage it, by all means, absolutely go for it. But generally speaking, uh, you want to just be focusing and making sure that you're getting your Goliath kicks down. The other thing that you have to be aware of is we're 37.89%. So when this dies, you're actually proccing prideful. So if you wanted to pull that other group in, unless you can kill it all evenly, I would advise against it because you'll be proccing prideful, you know, mid this pull um, and, it, and it will just go terribly for you. So we're not too bad, you know, 20%, 34% as this prideful comes out. Again, if you can manage to kill them as evenly as possible before your prideful comes out, it certainly helps. But we we did a fairly decent job. The, the Goliath finishes with a, with a shield there at 0.2, which is really unfortunate. And this Praetor is still up. The Dark Praetor isn't too bad in regards to outgoing damage, um, but it's still unfortunate. You still want to try and clean this stuff up and make it as easy as possible for your healer. Uh, as you can. So once that's dead, we're just going to finish up our prideful here. And then we are going into the next mobs, which is this other Praetor and the three divers. So um, as I mentioned, just kick, stun, control, whatever you can with the Insidious Venom. You can use your AMS to avoid application and stacks of that as well. Healers can dispel it um, with prideful though, generally not going to have too many problems. So once they're dead, we are heading off and we are going to the next platform. Uh, we're making sure that we get our Kyrian Spear and we are heading over. So back to MDT here. So we picked up our Spear and now we're over here. Now, Spear application wise, you do get another Spear over on this platform here. Okay. So with the Spear that you've just picked up, you have a couple of choices. One, you can use it on, depends how big you want to go. You can actually do these two pulls as one if you want and you can Spear it. And if it was fortified, you could nearly commit hero to it if you want and blow it up. It's definitely an option. Uh, otherwise, you can use spear on either of these packs over here as well, as they're also quite nasty. So completely up to you what you want to use it on. Um, so moving over to this platform now, there's uh, eight other divers on here, one skirmisher, one champion, two praetors, one goliath and one inquisitor and a new mob as well well a couple of them are new the squad leader so um the frostworn champions they're the same as menders uh they cast frostworn doctrine as well so that's that heal that you want to kick they also cast an ability called infused weapon which will cause their next auto attacks to deal uh, arcane damage so just extra magic damage coming out the skirmishers uh they throw a spear uh so you just want to move um, they also disengage like 20 yards because they're a massive C next Tuesday mob. Um, the Inquisitors, they cast Dark Lash, so the same as the Castigators. Uh, they'll also cast an Infernal Strike, so it marks a location on the ground to where they're going to leap to. Just move out of that. And lastly, the Squad Leaders. The Squad Leaders have this inspiring presence, so it's like the old Pally King's Blessing. Um, what happens is it causes nearby uh, allies to take 30% less damage from area of effect attacks. So pulling a big pull onto the squad leader is going to waste basically 30% of your splash and AOE damage. So you you know you don't want to do that. You want to generally fight them with as less uh, mobs around them as possible. So 
Let's move over to the VOD and have a look. So we're on our little flight point over to the next platform here and we're landing and we're pulling this pack here. So, um, yeah, I mean, these, these packs are all pretty stock standard. You're not going to have a lot of issues. Just be careful on the stairs, guys. Sometimes you can have a lot of stair issues with our uh, line of sight and things like that. There's the champion casting the doctrine. So we're just going to make sure we get a kick on that. We're managing whatever insidious venom casts we can. Moving out of the way if it's Sanguine or, or whatever it is. The Skirmisher with the Hurl and the Disengage, as I was talking about. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. You shouldn't have too many issues on that. Now, when you get to the top of the stairs, here's this big g -g 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 pack I was talking about. Now, these both pack. These, these next two packs both pat. If you want, you could spear this. You got Hero up. You could blow it up and go Biggie Chungus. However, if you're not in the Biggie Chungus fashion, because we're 7% off Prideful, so you need to do a good job in killing it, uh, you can wait. Wait for the divers to pat back off, then pull the Goliath, and you can just run down to the stairs here, and you can kill them down here. This is the safer way to do it. Again, two kicks on the Rebellious Fist, uh, one kick on the Rebel, sorry, Rebellious Fist, Rebellious Fist, and then uh, Anima Shield. Just make sure you've got the kicks locked down on your Goliath. That's the most important one. There's that Infernal Strike. If it's going off, just make sure you're getting out of the way. Otherwise, lock down whatever you can. And as I said, we're going to proc Prideful through this. So, uh, did that Sanguine get off on the... Oh, Sanguine got off on the stairs on that Goliath to heal it for like 20%. So, you just... As the tank, you just need to be really careful. I mean, your DPS need to have a brain in regards to melting it on top of it as well, especially when it gets low. But, you know, as the tank, sometimes you really, really need to be mindful of where you are moving things and even predicting if your group's not going to ease up to get it out of the way earlier. So, um, that, but that's, I mean, it's massively on me and you should be paying attention to the car sequence as well. It's fist, fist, shield. If it's done at second fist, you need to be getting it away from other mobs or trying to slow other mobs between it, create gaps and all that kind of stuff. So the Goliath is dead here. And then we're just going to prideful. We're going to kill prideful. You've seen prideful, you know what prideful does. And then we're going to run up the stairs. We're going to have these divers that are padding back. They're all the way at the end here. They're coming back. Remember the squad leaders, 30% reduced AOE damage with everything around it. So there's no point realistically in smashing all the uh the divers on the squad leader i mean we could we have prideful but it, it's you know it's a waste of 30 percent damage it, it still might have been worth it i don't know but we waited we're going to melt these with prideful they die really really quickly no issues there at all and then we're just going to go and get the squad leader here the squad leader and the Praetor, so the Dark Seeker again, just shooting out the little arcane bullets. The squad leader will do this leap. He'll do a crashing strike. You can see it's a giant frontal line that comes out. Uh, he'll do a little leap. He'll leave the uh, black circles on the ground. You just don't want to stand in them. And you just want to make sure you move out of his frontal. There's that inspiring presence again. You can sometimes separate them out uh, and get enough distance between them where, you know, your, your cleaves and your multi-dot classes can still manage to get a fair bit of damage into them. So when the squad leader dies, there's not much on them. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You shouldn't have too many issues on that. And then we're going to run over. We're going to take the flight point over to the next platform. So moving back to MDT, guys, uh, we are over here now. Okay, so what we're going to do in this pack here... We're actually going to do these two packs here before we do the boss because we're going to proc Prideful, our next Prideful, after this pack and go into this boss. Now, with this pack here, you actually want to CC, if possible, the Champion and the Inquisitor, okay? Um, and it makes this a hell of a lot easier. So in this next pack over here, you're going to have a Squad Leader, a Diver, a Champion, an Inquisitor, and a Praetor. Now, as I said, if you can CC the Champion... You remove having to manage the heal here, which is just, it's a nice, easy thing to not have to worry about. If you can CC the Inquisitor as well, he does this Dark Lash in the Infernal Strike, which is a fair bit of damage going out. If you've also got a Boomy in your group or a Druid, they can actually sleep or hibernate the Diver as well. Uh, and then you can just pull two of these. So that's what we end up doing. So we just want to fight the squad leader with as little as possible going on with it. So we can melt the squad leader. Once the squad leader's dead and the awe inspiring presence isn't an issue, then we break the rest and we just melt it down. Once that's dead, we run around, we reset the boss. If you don't have a way to reset the boss, even though you could just pull it and drag it out, um, or if you didn't want to, you could just run around the edge here. Uh, if you reset him, he'll just stop right here, which makes life easy. And then we're going to go and kill this mob. Same applies over here. We used the spear on this pack and tried to melt it. 
Um, that wasn't the play. I think it was a really large waste. So you want to come back over this side. CC, same fashion again. Um, over this side, there's squad leader, champion, stealth claw, diver, and a praetor. So just CC what you could over here. Drag the squad leader to here. Kill the squad leader ASAP and then break the rest. I think would have been the play. But um, we try and melt it and you'll see. So flying over here. Let me get over here. Uh, we are going to CC the champion and the inquisitor and humble ends up hibernating the diver as well. So you can see that goes to ZZ town. Uh, Teagues has to get, it's a little bit line of sighty to try and get up these stairs. So you could, but you can run all the way up here, throw a trap out or CC, whatever you're doing. Then I'm just going to pull the squad leader down here. The Praetor is going to come with that. He does that dark seeker. So big important thing here, obviously, is just melting the squad leader. You can see I was on the edge of that jump too. Little bit of a knockback if you are in that jump zone and a lot of damage. Crashing strike coming out here. You just want to make sure if Treants or Elementals got aggro on it, that your group aren't standing in the way of that strike. Uh, but just nuking this squad leader down ASAP as quick as we can. And once the squad leader is deado, uh, then we can start breaking the CC and dragging the other mobs in here. So we actually re-trapped the, um, the champion there, but there's no need. Once, once that's done, you can interrupt the doctrines. That's not really a problem. And then it's just a matter of finishing up the pack. So shouldn't have too many issues once you get rid of the squad leader. As I said, you can spear this pack if you want to. You can spear the next one if you didn't use it on the big giga pack. You know, you'll know where your group's going to have issues. That's where generally you want to use the spear on trash. So... We're going to finish up these, kill them, kill this last Praetor. We're going to go and reset the boss. Now, the boss does charge around if you are running, so just watch. Otherwise, you can just, you know, grab it and reset it. But otherwise, we're running around here. We've pulled it. We've uh, feigned death, so it resets. It's going to reset up the top here, which makes it easy and it doesn't move. And we're going to run all the way over here. Now, again, as I mentioned, CC would have been the play here, guys. If we had have CC'd, this would have been a lot quicker. We run in, we throw the spear, and we try and melt it. You'll see the spear. There it is there. It's literally a spear sticking out of the ground with a giant circle around it. Uh, all this is stunned for 8 or 10 seconds, and it's taking 20% uh, extra damage. However, you can see because of the inspiring presence that realistically not a hell of a lot happened, and it was probably wasted. So again... If we were coming back in here again, I'd CC, pull squad leader out, kill squad leader, and then throw spear and clean this up if that's what you wanted to do quickly. Now, we're going to proc our 80% prideful after this one. So we've had prideful going into the first boss, remember? We're now having prideful to go into the second boss here, Ventanax. Um, and he's he's an interesting boss. On Tyran, this is, the, the longer he's alive, the harder it is going to be for your group to dodge the little uh, swirls that come out of the shadow well for him. So here's our prideful, our 80% prideful into last boss. I'm just going to skip through this prideful because you all know how prideful works. Here he is because we reset him. So he's in a nice and easy position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tank him on the outside of this circle pretty much. And I'm just going to move counterclockwise, clockwise, whichever way you want to go on the outside of this circle. Every time he does a dark stride, he'll dash off and he'll leave this shadow whirl zone on the ground. Try and move about 15 yards away from it. That's going to spew out these little... Um, these little arrows, and they're going to shoot off around the platform in all directions. He's then going to do a blinding, a, is it blinding flash? Blinding flash here, okay? This is a giant frontal. You don't need to get behind him to not get blinded by this. You just need to get beside him or out of this frontal sort of that's blasting out here. What you can do as well, I just move around the encounter space and I don't have any problems. If your group has huge issues dodging and things like that, on this dark stride, you can actually move him back over near this first shadow swirl and you can drop the next dark stride because every time he does a dark stride, he leaves a shadow whirl. You could actually dump it over here. What that will mean is all these little arrows are coming out of one centralized point and area if you want to do that. Otherwise, if your group's fairly adapted to uh, dodging, you can just continue to move around the circle, which I think is what most groups do. And it's just what I've been doing naturally anyway. So you can see another dark stride is incoming here. It's going to drop and I am just going to move off. But I could have ran all the way back over to the original dark stride and dropped it there. And there's certainly 
nothing wrong in doing that it's quite big brain and it makes life easier for your group here comes a blinding flash just going to move to the side not round the back or any or you can move to the back but you know you don't need to run to narnia to get out of the way is my point then he's going to recharge and we're just going to finish up killing him so obviously the longer that he is alive the more shit you need to dodge in this fight and it come and it can become quite hectic especially in that sense there where i was running and i couldn't even see one of them and i got punted in the air so just be aware of it um there's a few different ways that you can handle that so he is about to die and then we're going to head off to the next area now if you make it to the middle you can jump and spam click the middle of your screen and what will happen is this flying person will pick you up all the way back here not over here and start flying you across and that's probably going to save you anywhere to like half a second and that's big savings are important so we're moving over to the next platform now over here we're not killing much all right this this route too i should tell you sorry if you got this far involves either an invis pot a shroud or a death skip but it's totally worth doing an invis pot if you don't have those other two options available here's your second spear you're going to pick this up if you've got a kyrian covenant player in your group and they're going to hold onto it until the boss platform okay they're going to pick it up and they're going to hold onto it do not let them use it now we're going to kill this halley on here this single one it's not too bad they do a crescendo which is like a three-pronged attack uh that goes out in like a 30 degree arc and they're going to do this impact thing which is like a leap damage thingy they also have menacing presence as well the longer they're alive the more arcane uh, damage they pulse i think they pulse arcane damage like every three seconds um so you want to finish them up pretty quickly once they're dead once this is dead we're going to hug the wall we're going to run up the wall we don't need a shroud or anything like that we're going to drop down into the middle of the stairs here now if you're venthia you can door of shadows up here and then you can use an invis pot to run if you're not venthia you can use an invis pot from here and run forward uh if you've got a druid they can prowl come all the way around here you can all run die res healer or if they're the healer mass res bob's your uncle but what we're going to do is we're going to get around into here. Everyone is going to line a sight behind this pillar here. The tank is then going to pull this row of usurpers, the non-elites. They're going to run around here. You're going to blow them up. Then going to do the third boss. You are then, after the third boss is dead, going to come and grab. Everyone's going to line a sight behind this pillar here. Tank's going to grab this row of usurpers, line a sight, blow them up. All right, cool. Let's go back and see how it's done. Why would I say it like that? All right, so we're moving over to this platform here. Spears off there on the right. Dugs went to get it. So we're going to fight this uh, Halion, as I was talking about. I don't actually know if it even does its um, crescendo or crashing strike or whatever I was called. There's the leap. So you can see literally where that's going to go. Leaves a little shadow zone on the ground as well. Treants have got it stuck in there at the moment. Uh, it has not cast the little crescendo-y thing at all at the moment. I don't know if it was bugged or if they took it away or what's happening, but it's just jumping. Just don't be in the bad swirly thing at the moment. And that's literally all that it's doing. It's pulsing out its arcane damage. You can see people are taking a bit of damage from it, but you shouldn't have too many issues on this one. So then we're going to move up to the right here and we're just going to hug the wall. And this is what I was talking about. You will have no problems in getting around here, okay? You don't need a shroud. You don't need anything special and you can do it on your mount. We're moving up here. We're going to drop down into the middle of the stairs. This would be your invis point uh, as well. Now, as I mentioned, door of shadows up here. If you're Venthia, no worries. If you've got a priest in your group as well, you can always soothe uh, the warden up the top there, or you could CC it and run around as well. But you're going to invis pot through or whatever way you're going through. So it doesn't really matter. So here's the shroud. We're going to come up the middle here. Importantly, everyone's going to line of sight before pulling all the usurpers the reason is if you pull the usurpers while everyone else is running to that point they'll hurl spears and everyone will end up getting hit it's not just like whoever aggroed gets the hurl spears on them so just be aware of that because as the tank you won't have any problems surviving but your other friends will uh so we're just going to line of sight them here we're going to blow them up they die really quickly sanguine is a bit of an annoyance here because of that but uh, outside of sanguine not really any issues they do a hurl spear that's not really a problem. That's it. Now we're on to the third boss. So the third boss here, uh, Ophi, Ophi Ron, I don't know, whatever his name is, Pacific Rim dude. Um, two big things with him. 
is the charge stomp and the imperial ordinance he'll do this purifying blast just stand out of the way of it that's it the charge stomp really hurts okay so here's the charge stomp here and you can see it does a hell of a damage here is the imperial ordinance you want to try and make a stack point and get everyone there drop the orbs and then run back and move the boss away from it now back to this charge stomp it's a massive magic damage hit up front and then it leaves a 12 second dot after it you can use ams to negate and avoid getting the debuff altogether and also mitigating a large portion of that uh front damage as well so just be aware of that our next point is in front for imperial ordinance is going to be in front of our last one so you can see it's coming up here i'm using door of shadows we're all dumping it in the same location and then we're just moving off. And then what you want to do is your group will have someone soaking it. If it's a hunter in turtle, if you didn't use AMS on the charge stomp, you could be using that to collect it. When he's doing this recharged anima, he's taking 100% extra damage. So you want to be saving your cooldowns for this bit and melting him as fast as you possibly can. But otherwise, guys, as the tank, your big role is around surviving charge stomp, making sure that melee aren't standing on you for charge stomp or they will die if they get hit by that. Uh, and then just making sure you move the boss away from those ordinances. So you'll see here, we're going to get a, another ordinance. It doesn't matter where you are for these as well. Okay. So here's ordinance. Now we're over this side. Okay. So the main thing is we've dropped them in the same point as the tank, just move the boss away from it. It doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to fight the boss in a set location. The main thing is that there's travel time between the boss and the orbs. And that's all you realistically want to do on fortified. You'll probably get lucky to have two soaks um I, I think maybe we do we i don't even know if we soak a second time we might soak a second time i'm not sure i have an itchy nose um so here's ordinance coming up again i'm door of shadowing out there we've got him in a nice line uh and i don't know if he actually i use ams there on the charge stomp so i don't take a bunch of damage um and that's that's pretty much it guys again tyran wise you'll be moving around with this boss a fair bit because you'll probably take two to three soaks on higher keys but outside of that you shouldn't be i uh, shouldn't have too many problems i am playing like a potato here my crimson scourge has been glowing for like 30 seconds press d and d bro um oh god that's embarrassing all right so the boss is dead so now we're moving over to this next pillar over here and then we're gonna grab this last line of non-elite usurpers so running over here you trigger one it triggers them all and then i'm just gonna run back again they're gonna nuke they're gonna fall over no real issues there so they're all clumped up pew 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 and then we're running and talking to these two guys so 88 percent here because we're gonna trigger our last prideful on the last mobs up here so Back to MDT. All right. So, these three fuckers. All right. You have a choice here, okay? One, two, three, or one, two, three. Never, ever, ever one. One, two, three is what I recommend, all right? So, I recommend fighting Lakesis first, okay? Reason being is it just i just feel like it works out better okay when you kill these guys these all have their abilities when you kill them their abilities get transferred to the next one and so on this was why the last one is gets really nasty as well and the last one just has nasty abilities anyway so with Lakesis, he's got an ability called crescendo which is that multi-split directional pronged attack in a 30 degree arc so you don't want to stand in that he also has oppression so the longer he lives the more damage everybody takes Astronos, uh, he has a charged spear that he'll throw down and then uh, crescendo lines will spew out of those in a north, east, south, west direction. So you just need to make sure that you're watching out for that. When you are fighting him as well, he will also have oppression because oppression will go from Lakesis to Astronos. Then once Astronos is dead, you are fighting the last one, Clotos. Clotos, whatever your name is. Now, that spear that you picked up all the way back here, that is right for him okay that spear was made for this dude is it a chick it's made for them okay so what we're going to do is we're going to spear and we're going to use our hero on this okay on fortified i would suggest using spear and heroism on this they're going to have oppression charge spear they've then got diminuendo uh which is a like leap slam 
And then they've got this aura of intimidation as well, which is a dot that goes on everyone that does a giga amount of damage as well as oppression going off, which just turns really nasty the longer this uh, mob is alive for. Now, at the moment, Feign Death, Vanish and things like that is actually working to drop Aura of Intimidation off. I don't know if that will get fixed, though. And then it's the final boss, Devos, which Devos is pretty much, pretty, like, it's it's simple. Um, there's a run through, get out of the way. There's a bubble, stand in it. There's orbs to return, return them, then throw the spear. So we'll cover that off in the VOD. So coming back here, we're going up, 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 up. And on the last mob up here, we actually get the Prideful to take into the last boss. So... Coming down, we're going to pull middle, then we're going to pull left, and then we're going to pull the far right one. So, Lexus is first, okay? Remember? So, here you can see Lexus. I'm just dragging this off to the side. You never want to pull more of these at the same time either. If you were, you know, being magically super duper or something like that, and you pulled two, once you kill one, the other one goes back to full health. So, that's why you don't do it. There was that crescendo thing, which is a three-pronged line attack. You just don't want to stand and it was on the trance and facing away from the group. So there was no problem whatsoever there. Here it is, dimming in your window. It's going out there and you just want to move out of the way. So no issues with that one whatsoever. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You can see oppression stacking up here. 26% extra damage being taken at the moment. Longer it lives, worse things get, especially if you're getting hit by anything else. Once that's dead, we're on to uh, Astronos. Astronos. Um, and again, so now he's got oppression because Lakes has had it and he's also got this charged spear. Charged spear, you can see here, there's going to be four lines that come out north, east, south, and west. Never eat soggy Weebix. Um, so they're going to spew out. You just need to make sure that you're not getting hit by those lines. More spears will come out. You as the tank need to make sure that you're moving away from them. Here's a charged spear here and giving your group plenty of room, especially your melee players, room to dodge those spears. Okay, so that's pretty much it with him. Not too many issues. And then we're going to the last mob, Clotos. Clotos. Them. So, this one, as I mentioned, fairly nasty. Now, Humble ended up dying here, and we should have just waited. I mean, we timed this key, but we should have waited because we spear this, and as I said, we should have heroed it. We don't hero it, but I'm I'm we'll be recommending to my group from now on to always hero this on Fortified. Uh, and I would recommend the same to you. So Humble's coming up. We decide to pull it and spear it anyway. So spear goes off. You want to drop this as quick as you can because you can see here, oppression stacking up extra damage. The intimidated dot that's out gets really nasty and makes life really hard on your healer, especially as oppression starts to ramp up. So does the damage from this and so does the damage from every other single ability, which means if anyone is getting hit by anything that they shouldn't, they're going to cop it sweet. So Chewy ends up dying here. We still survive, but if we had have just waited, if we had have heroed, we probably would have got through this a hell of a lot quicker and safer than risking a full wipe, which is not what I want to see happen to you guys. So just be really aware of that, all right? So moving him away from the charge spears. Um, if you can drop the oppression, you can see Teague's only got two stacks because she feigned and it dropped off and things like that. So if you can do that to minimize the stacks of oppression or of intimidated, sorry, make sure you're doing that until Blizzard fix it. So we're going to kill, once he dies, we're going to spawn Prideful. So it takes like, I don't know, 10 seconds to click over. You can see it's dead. We're at 96.84. And then it ticks over for Prideful after a little bit of RP. So we're going to kill Prideful. You know what Prideful is like. Kill, 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 pew, pew, pew. Prideful's dead. Oh, he's up turbo. Uh, back, 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 back. And then we're going to engage Devos. Okay, so as I said, there is a run through that it will target a random player in your group and charge off towards them. So it's coming in, I don't know, a second. And we're just going to make sure we move out of the way. Here it is here. Run through, moving out of the way. Big, big blue shield. Abyssal detonation comes out. Here it is here. It's about to come out. We're going to stand in this shield. I'm safe because of my little weak aura. It tells me I'm in the shield. It blows up. I don't, we don't die. So if you're outside the shield when the abyssal detonation goes off, you will die. So just make sure you're standing in the shield. As the tank, always try and position the boss near the shield uh, when the abyssal detonation is going off. So your melee can stand inside the shield and continue to do damage to the boss. That way you're not losing any uptime on it. At 70%, she's going to phase or Devos is going to phase. So there we go. It's phased. And then we're going to move over and just spread out across the platform to return the orbs. So orbs coming back here. It's worth noting too, um, when Devos is actually channeling that in the middle, you can get a little bit more free damage by just pew, pew, pewing there. 
So we are moving into the middle here, returning all the orbs. Uh, if you're throwing the spear, it's fine. Just click it, wait for it to stop moving and then throw it into Devos. Otherwise, if someone else clicks it, you know, make sure they hit the uh make sure the spear hits so devos comes back down and it's just a rinse repeat guys there's that stacking dot through that uh intermission phase as well you can drop amz for people to stand in to reduce a little bit of the damage there run through moving out of the way shield coming down so we're going to move back towards the shield so, uh, abyssal detonation is coming down there it is there making sure we're safe in the shield not standing in this circle either that blows up and that's pretty much it guys it's a rinse repeat so Hopefully, I've covered everything off that's given you enough confidence to go through this dungeon now. As I said, uh, a new format. I thought I would experiment with it. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If it's too long and you just want me to kind of just talk over the top of a VOD and skip through it a lot quicker, let me know too. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to try something different and I've been seeing a lot of topics and a lot of threads about tank anxiety, not knowing what to pull, navigating prideful spawns and all that kind of stuff. So that was the reason behind this new format and doing it this way. Hopefully, it helps. Uh, what I would like to shout out too, if you want some more written information to look over, my friend uh, Mandel, who is the uh, Wowhead uh, Blood DK author, writes all the guides, does a lot of the theory crafting, um, a hell of a lot of the theory crafting for Blood DK, has some Mythic Plus guides for the dungeons up from a Blood DK perspective to give you a hand with that. So they're located on Icy Veins. Uh, and Panthea as well in the DK Discord does a lot of theory crafting and also uh, does manages tank notes. A lot of the dungeon info and tips for tanks is on there as well, spanning all the tank classes. So uh, go and check them out if you want some more written info. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, come find me in the Discord. Come say hi on Twitch. I'll see you all next time. See you, fam.